Today is Veterans Day. Veterans Day honors all those who have served our country in war or peace and is largely intended to thank living veterans for their sacrifices. It was originally called Armistice Day, commemorating the end of World War I. On behalf of our military kids, I would like to thank all veterans for their service and sacrifice. My name is Lauren Lomsdale and I am the digital editor of Military Families Magazine, a sister publication of Reserve and National Guard Magazine. I am so thrilled to be here today to be your MC as we celebrate military kids, military spouses, and the brave men and women in uniform. For the past 16 years, our military kids has been improving the morale of service members and their families by supporting the children of Reserve, National Guard, and severely injured service members. When mom or dad is deployed or in recovery, the kids get a grant for extracurricular activities of their choosing. For a unique example, Elizabeth, Charlie, and Thomas took opera lessons with their grant from our military kids. To set a patriotic tone and to showcase their talents, please welcome the Buenteo family to sing God Bless the USA. Tomorrow all I had is gone and all I hope to see. And if I have to start again with just my friends and family, I thank my lucky star to be living here today. Cause the flag still stands for freedom and they can't take that away. Cause I'm proud to be an American where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the man who died who gave that right to me. And I proudly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. From the lakes of Minnesota to the hills of Tennessee. Across the plains of Texas, from sea to shining sea. From Detroit down to Houston, New York to LA. There's pride in every American heart, and it's time to stand and say. But I'm proud to be an American, where at least I know I'm free. And I won't forget the man who died, who gave that right to me. And I proudly stand up next to you and defend her still today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. Thank you, Pia, Charlie, Elizabeth, Thomas, and Catherine. What an accomplished family. Before I share the flow of the program, I want to get the conversation started out on social media. Whether you're listening to this live or recorded later, please chime in with what city and state you're in in the comments. I'm here in Key West, which is usually beautiful, but right now we're getting ready for a hurricane, so it's not super pretty, but it's usually wonderful. For extra credit, fill in the end of this Jimmy Buffett lyric about Key West. The weather is here. Wish you were blank. Let us know what your answer is in the comments below. The program today is incredible. Through the testimonials of the grant recipient families, we're going to hear about the incredible positive impact our military kids' grants are having on family morale, the service member morale, and reducing the stress and anxiety in military kids. We are also going to share an inspirational Veterans Day message from Lieutenant General John Jensen. To close out the program, we'll hear from our Military Kids Board Chair, Barry Miller, who will be thanking several incredible sponsors. But first, I would like to introduce Kara Dahlman. Kara is a retired Navy veteran and is married to a retired Navy veteran. And she recently joined our Military Kids as the Executive Director. She's going to fill you in on OMK's response to COVID-19 and the Honor 120 campaign. Thank you so much, Lauren. Our Military Kids provides extracurricular activity grants to a very vulnerable subset of military children. We provide grants to children who have a parent in the National Guard, in the Reserve, or a parent who is recovering from serious combat injuries. Imagine if your service member was deployed overseas for 400 days and COVID hit. 
Imagine if your veteran was in recovery from PTSD or TBI and was greatly impacted by the shelter in place orders. Everyone's lives were upended, but for our families, our children, everything was exacerbated because of their military service. At our military kids, we have a unique mission. Every day we strive to recognize the service and sacrifice of military children. We want to instill confidence. We want them to confidently identify as military children. We know that many of our families are not near a military installation or part of a military community. So in a pandemic year, we knew that our unique mission was perfectly suited to help these families and we got to work. So we ramped up and launched our Honor 120 campaign in the 120 days leading up to Veterans Day today. And what we did was expand the grant criteria. So if you were a child who had a parent who was recovering from serious injuries, then you got an extra grant. And if you were a child with a parent deployed overseas, you were eligible for two activity grants. And three and four year olds, we heard you. We know that you like to tumble and swim with the rest of them. So we expanded our age criteria to include three and four year olds. Now, the unique thing that we were able to do due to the pandemic was for children who had a parent who was activated for 120 days or more stateside in the COVID mission or the Southwest border mission, for the first time in our history, you were eligible for an activity grant. And the results are in. It is absolutely exciting. We were able to give out 2,240 grants in the last 120 days, totaling $639,000. I mean, it is just fantastic. And what's also very cool is that we were able to give grants in all 50 states and two territories. So if you haven't gone into the chat box and put your city, state, or territory, please do so now. Today's program is really all about hearing from our families, our beneficiaries. They are the best at articulating the impact our grants have on their families' morale, the service members' morale, and the psychological well being of their children. For 16 years, our military kids have been so proud to let military children choose an activity, choose an activity that becomes a passion or simply an activity that will make the child strong. And, and we're very, very pleased to have been there to do that. So uh, glad to be here with you today and back over to you, Lauren. Thanks, Kara. And thank you to all the creativity our military kids has exercised in the last 120 days to recognize the service and sacrifice of military kids. Well done. I would now like to introduce Master Sergeant Angela Morales Biggs, whose family benefited from OMK's program supporting severely injured service members and veterans in recovery. Master Sergeant Morales Biggs is a combat veteran and active ambassador for the Air Force Wounded Warrior Program. She is also a peer mentor for military sexual assault victims. She is credited with saving over a dozen lives while providing combat lifesaver care during mass casualties. After being hit and wounded herself by a suicide bomber and vehicle-borne IED, Master Sergeant Morales Biggs pulled two Afghan guards from a fallen watchtower. The attack continued small arms fire and rocket attacks leading to the base perimeter breach. Master Sergeant Morales Biggs and her remaining squad provided security while engaging with Taliban fighters. During a separate ambush, she and four infantrymen were air inserted by Black Hawk into a 25 vehicle convoy. Once on scene, she coordinated a nine line medical evacuation for two injured soldiers. She and her team then provided dismounted reconnaissance under enemy engagement. 13 IEDs were found and secured on this multi-day mission back to the convoy's original destination point. Master Sergeant Morales Bakes received many awards, including the Purple Heart. She is here to tell you her story and how the activity grants for gymnastics and piano from our military kids helped her daughter, Allie, when Master Sergeant was having stress days. Hi everyone, my name is Angie Morales and I'm here with my beautiful little girl. Allie Morales. And we're here today to say thank you to our military kids for supplying grants to myself and I'm sure 
so many other families that benefited from this amazing program. Um, during a very stressful time in my life, while I was going through uh, recovery after being injured in Afghanistan, um, I uh, it's about two years, I would say, that I had to go through intense therapy for a brain injury um, at Walter Reed. During that time, um, they supplied us with two grants, which really helped our family out um, during our, what we call... Stress days. Yeah, and she wanted to tell you a little bit about her experience as a child and how it helps out with the morale of our family and why it's so important. Go ahead. Um, so before my mom had migraines and we used to call that stress days. Mm -hmm. And before me and my little baby brothers, we didn't get to have some fun days without our mom. Yes, because those days I would have to stay in bed, um, you know, just feeling uh, with post-traumatic headaches. It's uh, it's an invisible wound, just like any other wound. And, uh, you know, along with that, you're suffering from post-traumatic stress, which I know there's a negative stigma about, but really we like to look at it in our family as post-traumatic growth, stress growth. And we have grown so much from it and have become so strong. And we just want to advocate for everybody out there that anything is possible and through healing and organizations like our military kids it could really bring family together um some of the things that we did as a family that helped us kind of get through those stress days are the gymnastics and piano that she did so she did those um for what about a year and you want to tell them about your gymnastics how that helped you yeah um when i was going through gymnastics it was very fun and sometimes it was hard to do stuff in gymnastics, but I overcome it. That's great, yep. And then the piano was the other one, which that also helped me listening to her play because it triggered different um, areas of my brain that helped with my neural pathways and helped with healing. It's just so many amazing things out there um, that if you really look, um, it'll help veterans, help families, and we are so thankful we just want to wish everyone also a happy Veterans Day. Keep supporting us. Thank you all for your support. Thank and you. And we will see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, Master Sergeant Morales Biggs, for sharing your story and telling us how much the grant with OMK has helped your family and your family's morale. Now, I'm very proud to roll a special Veterans Day message from Lieutenant General John Jensen, the 22nd Director of the Army National Guard. Hello, I'm Lieutenant General John Jensen, Director of the Army National Guard. Today we celebrate Veterans Day and recognize all who have served and continue to serve our nation with honor and distinction. As we reflect on this day, I can't help but be proud of our Army Guard members. They train hard, serve their communities in times of need, and deploy overseas in support of the war fight. I am thankful for their dedication, their sacrifices, and especially during the time of COVID-19, their commitment to keeping their communities safe. At the peak of COVID-19 response efforts, over 47,000 National Guard soldiers and airmen were on duty throughout the country, where they distributed 380 million masks, gloves, gowns, and other PPE, delivered 367 million meals, and assisted in the screening and testing of 9.3 million Americans. Our force remains ready to support the mission at home or abroad. Whether it's battling wildfires, supporting the Southwest Border Mission, responding to COVID-19, training for contingency operations for overseas deployments, we remain ready when needed. There is no doubt this past year has put a strain on families and loved ones who support our soldiers. But know this, our soldiers are very enthusiastic to serve and tackle any mission given to them. And we are able to do what we do because we have great soldiers, who have families and employers who support them. Throughout our nation's history, our veterans have kept us free, returned home, and continued to serve our nation in a multitude of ways. Today, we say thank you to all our veterans. General Jensen, thank you for your leadership and the strong work of the Army National Guard. Next, we have the pleasure of meeting a soldier from the New York National Guard, Staff Sergeant Richard Blyatt, who's currently in an undisclosed location. Actually, we're going to hear from the home front first. His wife, Karen. Karen, take it away. Who's that? Hi, 
my name is Karen Goliath, and my family is truly honored for our daughter Everly to be spotlighted in the Armed Military Kids annual event. For my six-year-old daughter, having her father deploy was especially difficult. Everly has overcome numerous medical procedures with her father always by her side. Along with these medical complications, Everly has overcome a traumatic experience that has left her with PTSD and anxiety. During one of her episodes, her father was the only one that was able to calm her down and reassure her that she was safe. So facing a deployment was full of uncertainty and worry. Living here in New York when COVID hit a month after my husband deployed was surreal. I remember going into a grocery store and overhearing customers make comments like, leave the kid at home and where is that child's father? I felt like wearing a sign saying my husband is deployed and no, I have no other choice. We felt isolated and alone and jealous of all the other families that got to spend quarantine together. But most of all, we worried about how my husband would deal with COVID overseas. However, we got through it. We decorated care packages, we mailed drawings, we fostered kittens, and we took it day by day. Because if being a military family has taught us anything, is that nothing ever goes as planned, but everything will work out in the end. Thanks to the Our Military Kids Grant Program, my daughter Everly was able to continue her equine therapy for her PTSD and anxiety with Fran Queen Acres in Earlton, New York. Through her connection with horses, Everly has gained confidence, laughs with her whole heart, and is able to embrace people once again. Because of the March Military Kids Grant Program, we are truly grateful for every giggle and smile that we receive. Here's my daddy. Hi, my name is Staff Sergeant Richard Goliath. I'm with the 42nd Infantry Division, currently deployed to the Middle East. I want to say thank you to our entire military kids staff for this great opportunity to spotlight my daughter Everly in your Our Military Kids annual event. I also want to say how proud I am of Everly and my wife Karen for everything that you guys have done during this deployment. Deployments are never easy no matter what side of the world you are on. Being away from family adds a completely different level of stress that is hard to put into words. When COVID-19 hit the States, I had no idea how they were going to get through it, being just the two of them. Going to the store to buy food became a project where Karen went, Everly had to go, exposing them both to the possibility of getting COVID. Being here has not been any easier. Everly has been having medical conditions performed well before she was one years old. Through every procedure, I have been there to be her rock and her comfort blanket. Even with everything, she has continued to stay strong and take everything in stride. Due to everything that she's gone through, she has developed a form of post-traumatic stress and has anxiety. Everly was afraid to make friends and to be around other people, especially kids. But thanks to her time at Crown Queen Anchors and her coach Lauren, Everly has been able to get her anxiety under control and is a completely different kid.
Everly went from watching the neighborhood kids play outside to our house being the epicenter of the entire neighborhood. Seeing the pictures and videos of this has taken a load off my mind. Seeing her having friends like that has made this deployment a little bit easier. Thank you for your support. Rainbow, never forget. Wow, Staff Sergeant Clyatt. Your family story is incredible, and Everly's ability to control the stallion is literally something I never thought I would see. It really points to the incredible resilience of military kids. Thank you. Stay safe and stay well. We've heard from a military mom and a military dad. Now it's time to hear from a military kid. When Max's dad was deployed in 2017, Max kept a journal, revealing his fears about his dad being in a war zone, his humor over his stuff at home, and a maturity beyond his years, and keeping his cool until dad's return. Now, Max is 16 and has offered to put his experience into perspective, especially as it relates to the piano lessons he was able to take with his R Military Kids grant. Hi, my name is Max Vandeveld. When I was 12, my father was sent to Afghanistan for eight months on active duty in the military. My sister, Julia, was only seven at the time. As a way to express my thoughts, I wrote in a journal every day about the things I did at home and at school while my father was away. I wrote in my journal most days of the nearly 250 days my father was gone, and I found it helpful to put down my thoughts on paper. Originally, I had no intention of sharing the journal, but with some encouragement, I thought perhaps sharing the journal on our military kids might be helpful for the others whose parents were deployed. About the time I found out my father was going to be deployed, I expressed an interest in learning the piano. Our military kids sent my sister and me a grant to support my piano lessons and her dance lessons. It was a very nice gift and I decided to work really hard at learning to play the piano, especially so that I could learn my dad's favorite piece, Claire de Lune. During the eight months my father was gone, with the help of my wonderful piano teacher, I learned that beautiful piece and surprised my dad by playing it during our Christmas piano recital just after he came home in December of 2017. The gift from our military kids sparked an interest in me for learning classical piano. I go to the piano often now just to relax. I'm currently working on Chopin's Waltz in A minor. I plan to keep playing for the rest of my life and I am so grateful to our military kids for this gift of piano lessons which started my interest. Max, you really are impressive. Thank you for sharing your story. To close out the program, I invite board chair Barry Miller to say a few words about the generous investors who support our military kids. Barry served four years in the United States Army with assignments in Washington, D.C., Germany, and Italy, including as a platoon leader in the 1st 509th Airborne Battalion Combat Team. He holds a degree in economics from Princeton University and an MBA from the Tech School at Dartmouth College, where he was a Tech Scholar and studied in both Switzerland and France. Barry is currently an independent management consultant based in Bethesda, Maryland. Fun fact, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General Mark Milley, was a class behind Barry's at Princeton. While Barry takes the stage, please share with us a fun fact about your military service or the extracurricular activity you would choose for your OMK grant. If it was me, I think I would choose horseback riding just like Everly. That seems like so much fun. Use the hashtag fun fact so we can find it quick. Thank you for the kind introduction, Lauren. We appreciate the support of AmeriForce Media and your expertise as our MC today. We are so grateful to have so many incredible supporters. I first want to recognize our top annual supporter, KBP Foods, headquartered in Overland Park, Kansas. In seven short years, KBP has, Foods has raised more than $2 million for our military kids. Now, twice a year, the employees of KBP's Kentucky Fried Chicken stores sell uh, charity coupon books to raise money for our military kids. And this fall, their hard work led to their largest donation ever. Absolutely incredible. Many of our donors have been with us for more than a decade, and we want to extend a special thank you to Lockheed Martin, to the American Legion Child Welfare Foundation, and the USAA Foundation for their investment in military children over the years. We would also like to recognize two generous supporters, the Wounded Warrior Project and the Disabled American Veterans Charitable Trust, who provide funding directly to our severely injured program. Last, I want to give a shout out to our individual donors. Now you sustain us over the long haul. 
Whether you give every month or as part of our annual appeal, we thank you. Individual donors have contributed more than $200,000 this year with the Florida VFW Auxiliary raising $78,000 and the British Reliability Run raising more than $40,000. It is truly amazing. Thank you all for your extraordinary generosity. Now, because of you, we have decided, drum roll please, to extend our Honor 120 campaign to the end of the year because our military kids deserve this additional recognition and support for their service and sacrifice, especially in this pandemic year. Back to you, Lauren. Wow, that's fantastic news, Barry. Did everyone hear that? Uh, all the criteria that Kara had mentioned at the offset of this program is going to stay into effect until December 31st. Although it's hard to bring the program to a close with this news, we must. I want to thank everyone again for joining us on Veterans Day, especially our speakers. To all of our veterans out there, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts for following the call to serve in America's great military. We enjoy our freedom because of your service and sacrifice. We hope that you will continue to support them into 2021 with the goal of reaching even more families. Let's get the word out about our military kids. Thank you.